Thank you, Glenda, and thank you, Colton and Sherry. It's a great team to be with. Uh, and I thank the learning community for having us uh, involved with this. Um, let me just get myself a pointer going here. And um, what I'm gonna do is take the NORSED concept, the geospatial things that Colton talked about and the uh, social networks that Gwenda just talked about and kind of tie them together and give you some insight on a specific example of how those things and, and um, pull together. And you need to think about that yourself and, and kind of think about these things and how they pull together. Uh, this, what we're going to present here is portion of a uh, swine manure shed paper that will come out in Journal of Environment and Quality in a special edition uh, coming up on manure sheds. The authors are listed here, uh, everybody from USDA, ARS with exception of myself and Dr. Bob Mikesell from Penn State. I'm gonna start with putting my two concluders up front with the one theme from this paper. And that is that Sparta expansion can and does impact manure shed footprints. And while the swine industry can assist in manure shed designations through location of future farms, where we locate animals, the poultry industry can move manure uh, and not animals. That's Blender also just pointed out. So when we looked at this uh, idea of the manure shed, we saw that we have some overlaps between swine and poultry. When we look at this map, we can see that we have uh, swine counties with P and, and nit phosphorus and nitrogen. Swine counties are represented largely by red. So if the, the dominant nutrient and animal in that county is swine, it's red. If it's green county, it's predominantly poultry. If you look through the country, you will see some counties scattered through the Midwest and down in coastal Carolina and up in Pennsylvania, uh, the southeastern corner of Pennsylvania that have the orange and yellow counties where we have both swine and poultry mixed together. So we have this overlap of manure sheds in these counties. I'm sorry, my pointer is not working quite right. So I've got it hidden behind the uh, other chat pod in my screen. Uh, so we have a fundamental challenge though, and a difference between these two industries. When we look at manure sheds, one of the big challenges with swine manure is that it's hard to handle and transport long distances because it's so liquid. Taking that manure nutrient from the swine farm and moving it up the road becomes difficult. Poultry litter though is solid in nature and more easily transportable. Um, in Pennsylvania, we're going to shift gears a little bit from thinking strictly about nutrients to a case study of the odor site assessment program that we have here in Pennsylvania. My colleague uh, and good friend, Dr. Bob Mikesell in the Department of Animal Science uh, with me provides a free voluntary assessment program to anybody interested in building a new animal housing facility. And the program focuses on the potential for odor conflict at this proposed site. The program is mostly used by single swine company and a single poultry company, both of these companies being vertically integrated. Now this program will go to a farm that has no animals on it. They propose to build a, an animal facility. It looks at the local lay of the land, how many neighbors there are, the directions of the neighbors and, the, and evaluates the potential for odor conflict. If it's a good site with low odor conflict potential, it's a really good third party uh, university endorsement of that site. And the integrator and the producer may utilize that report to assist in permitting or financing. It certainly is not uh, the total uh, package as far as getting permitting or financing, but it can help. And a lot of our uh, ag lenders and a lot of our agency folks and zoning folks in the state are used to seeing this. So it's become a kind of a normal thing. And it also helps the public image of the producer, right? If, he go, if that producer goes to permit a new facility and we're putting animals in a spot that never had them before, we can see at times a uh, public image uh, concerns or public that is concerned about the animal coming to the farm, coming to their odor, uh, base, coming to their neighborhood based on odor. And it actually can help with that because we have this university program. Uh, if the farm is voted as a poor site, it does great things for the industry. The individual producer may lose out because they may not be able to build with that integrator because the integrator might say, hey, you're a great producer, but your site is poor and we want to move on somewhere else. And if they do not construct there, they've avoided odor conflict, helps the public image. Sometimes the parties may 
modify their intentions. We've had some producers, for instance, uh, lower their animal numbers or move from swine to poultry because the odor rating for poultry is lower. Now here's kind of two slides in one. When we look at this first slide, uh, first section over here, this is just the numbers of, this, of what's gone on with this odor site assessment. Dr. Mikesell has done 538 total assessments between 1999 and 2020. Of those 529, four for swine and poultry farms, 2254 and 275 for swine and poultry uh, respectively. Of those done in the first 15 years, he evaluated the progress and found that 54% of the sites actually had construction on them. When we start to map those, um, we look at this column here, which is hogs, and the other column, which are poultry. And of course, these are Pennsylvania counties, and the darker the pink, the more site evaluations Dr. Mikesell did. And these rows are in five-year increments. I'll note that the first row that says 2000 to 2005, over here we have 1999. Three site assessments in 1999 were lumped into the year 2000, just to make our graph, our graphic here provided by Colton a little bit nicer. Let's look at what's happened with hogs. In the first five years of this century, hogs were uh, being located and site evaluations were, were being located in the Eastern section of the state and in particular, a lot of them were in the Lancaster area and that southeastern portion of the state where in our first map, we showed you the overlap of swine and poultry located in this area. As we move through these years, we see that the site evaluations, the place where the integrator is looking to locate new pigs moves north and west through these years. And it remains that way as we move uh, forward. If we look at poultry, these four circles in these four, four time frames of five year blocks largely don't move. They stay in the same spot. So the poultry industry, as they look to uh, build new barns and expand their business, they really aren't moving their animals. The swine folks are moving their animals north and west. And in doing that, they're shifting their manure shed. So the population trend from the 2017 NAS data also shows us this. When we look at this map, you can see that larger circles are more animal units in a county. Counties with uh, a predetermined, you know, a number that we picked on low number of animal units were not included here. So you can see most of our animal are located in the center part of the state or this triangle. Pink circles indicate pigs, green circles indicate poultry, and uh, ones that are in between with a, with a shading of lighter pink or lighter green indicate a scale and a proportion of uh, poultry and pigs in that county. This just helps to demonstrate to the NAS data that our pigs are located to the north and the west while the poultry do indeed stay in that southeastern quadrant of the state. Now let's look at these two graphs. The first uh, graph over here, our first diagram over here shows us where the star is where the harvest facility or slaughter facility is for the pigs. These are uh, arrows that I just arbitrarily put on there just to demonstrate that pigs travel a lot further to their harvest facility than do poultry on this second graphic. The poultry facility located more centrally to the poultry dense area to this overlap manure shed of swine and poultry and the birds don't travel quite as far. And that comes into play. Some of those social and regional network uh, ideas that we just heard about. So what are the ex drivers of expansion? For swine, as we interview the industry, as we work with the industry, as we uh, do these odor evaluations, these site evaluations, we learn what the drivers are. For swine, it's health and animal welfare. Farm isolation is very important to this integrator. As they develop and move their industry, they want to move it to areas away from other pigs. This really pays off in the bottom line in their herd health, in their whole system health, and allows them to be more profitable and is also great for welfare. There's also social forces, and that is uh, avoiding odor conflict. We're moving to areas where animal agriculture is acceptable, where we have rural lands, where we do not have conflict with other odor sources, and where we are further away from people in and uh, the next impact would be for the manure shed impact. 
this integrator would seek a farm where manure nutrients are needed. They know through their expansion uh, history that if they work with a producer who does not need the manure nutrients for their cropping operations, that that, that uh, producer is more likely to view the manure nutrients as a waste product instead of a fertilizing asset. And that means that the producer will be a better steward. And by the way, as they do that and they seek that person who wants us to find a replacement for fertilizer costs in the form of swine manure, they are also having impacts on the manure shed and moving locally to a sink area. For poultry, health and animal welfare and consumer products are certainly very important. At the end of the day, that consumer product actually drives that those shorter arrows we saw because one of the goals is to keep animals on the truck or in transport to the harvest facility for 90 minutes or less. We saw that swine can move further then the birds can move. The manure shed impact is that solid manure, the poultry litter is routinely transported. We have an advanced brokering industry in Pennsylvania and we're moving that solid manure from source to sink at a regular interview, both to cropland sinks, but also sometimes to the mushroom industry, which is prevalent in the state. So if we think about that idea where Colton said, uh, the dairy manure can move 11 miles or 18 kilometers. Swine manure, we expect to move less than that. Poultry manure routinely moves much further than that in our state. So some concluding thoughts, right? Stakeholders are very important. I think this helps to tie together all the things that our other speakers talked about, right? The producers, the integrators, the universities, the agencies, all can influence future manure shed locations and how we think about expanding. Smart expansion should play a key role in manure shed location by distributing nutrients across the landscape, but not just based on nutrient reasons. We also need to consider the animal health and odor conflict, those social aspects that come into play. And finally, uh, the swine industry can assist manure shed designations through location of animal placement by moving their animals smartly to places where we have a sink, either locally or on a county or a regional level and placing animals in that sink area. But the poultry industry has that flexibility that we've heard about from Gwender and that I also helped to discuss that they can move the manure and not the animals. So with that, I'll, I thank you all and I'll turn things over to Joe for our Q&A session.